Thank you so much, Becca, for starting us off. So next up, we have another graduate student, Tyler Smith of the Laredo Lab. Originally hailing from central Pennsylvania, Tyler did his undergrad in biochemistry at Syracuse University before coming to MIT. About his interest in biology, Tyler says that every time he goes to an aquarium or zoo, he is amazed by the sheer diversity of life and thinks about all of the strange and wonderful things that we don't know yet. He is thrilled to be able to try and uncover these things here at MIT, and is especially happy that no one has told him to stop or kicked him out yet. <laughs> I also happen to know him as a world-class dungeon master. Without further ado, Tyler Smith. <laughs> So there are millions of species on Earth, and we interact with many of these every day, whether they be our pets, our food, or the microbes that live within and around us. Despite this tremendous diversity, though, biologists predominantly study maybe seven or eight of these. We, of course, study humans ourselves because we're fairly self-centered. Um, <laughs> but when we can't study a process in humans, we rely on the model organisms. And these are easily manipulated, they have fast generation times, and much of their biology is broadly conserved across life. In short, they're relatively easy to work with, but the diversity of life has not been captured in the diversity of the organisms we study. We've essentially been in this vast, dark cave with a campfire, and we've spent the majority of our time studying the things around that campfire, the things that we can see. But there are whole regions of this cave that have been dark and neglected and that we know almost nothing about. For instance, Toxoplasma gondii, pictured in magenta above, is a parasite that infects approximately a third of the global population. It belongs to a class of parasites that constitute thousands of species that live from coral to livestock to humans, and this includes the malaria parasite, which kills 400,000 a year. Despite its prevalence, approximately half of Toxoplasma's 8,000 protein coding genes are annotated as hypothetical meaning that they don't look like any of the many known and characterized proteins of model organisms. Basically, they're a little weird. Um, and this weirdness has caused us to miss much of the fundamental biology by which Toxoplasma and its relatives operate. So how do we begin to explore this dark corner of the cave containing 4,000 mysterious genes? To do so, I've utilized recent advances in genome editing to visualize by microscopy over 100 different Toxoplasma proteins within the cell. And pictured in yellow above are three different uh, proteins going to three different distinct structural features in the parasite. And what got me really excited is that these three features are unique to Toxoplasma and its relatives. And this suggests that these proteins are involved in biological processes that are diverged from those found in our traditional model organisms and specific to these parasites. And we now have a molecu molecular handle on these processes and can begin to unravel their governing mechanism. And the study of these non-universal features is important, not only because it could hold the next drug target or the next transformative biotechnology, but it's giving us key insight into evolution and fundamental biology, mechanisms by which life operates which we can't even begin to predict. So while there's still much more to be learned from the traditional model organisms, we can begin using the recent advances in biotechnology to start exploring outside of our campfire. We can start using them as a flashlight and start looking into these previously neglected and dark parts of nature's cave. Thank you. <laughs> 